just holding it. All right, ready? Today, we're gonna be upgrading this new compressor I just picked up for 75 bucks. Swapping it out for the little 20 gallon power mate that I have so that I can better run things like my giant sandblaster. Two horsepower twin cylinder compressor. I, I can't find much information about it. I think it, it's maybe a 5 CFM model. Um, I bought a twin cylinder 12 CFM pump off of Vever, Vever. I'm not sure how to say it. I got a bunch of their tools. They're usually pretty good. That's actually my plating machine is, is, a, is a Vever, Vever uh, tool. So I'm gonna be doing this over the course of a couple days because I don't wanna rush out and buy a ton of fittings and, and all kinds of stuff to uh, do this project and then have to return a bunch of stuff, so. And immediately after saying this, that's exactly what this idiot did day by day over the next week and a half. I'll work on it bit by bit because my other compressor obviously still works for now. Um, and I'm also gonna be doing a water cooling loop to help keep the air temps down because another thing that happens is when the compressor gets hotter as it's running, the air gets hotter hot air is wet air and then I got to go through more desiccant and then you know maybe I won't catch it and then my sandblaster starts clogging up so let's get right to the work so I'm going to take this big heavy cable that's already hooked up to the big generator remove the end pull the cable through the door and hook it up to the new oven outlet which the new air compressor uses that plug and oh yeah it's real tight Voila, generator will now power the new air compressor. It doesn't sound great. And it when you spin the spindle, it feels real crunchy. Uh, it couldn't really start this up and it's only like a 12 amp. That generator should more than start this. So I think I'm gonna order a motor too, I guess. Definitely see where the head gasket was leaking the whole way around here and about halfway here. Some dirty pistons for something that's never seen combustion. I would say this motor is uh, a little bit worn out. Look how fast it stops. I'm not spinning that hard. Now that the tank's all cleaned off, I'm going to tape off all the original stickers and serial number plates so I can try to preserve those in the future. I'd like to be able to still see them even when the tank is repainted. And then I'm sanding off all the rough rust and getting the whole tank smooth and scuffed so the paint sticks well. This was actually the first time I've ever gotten to use a paint gun and it's the first time I've ever used this like 30 year old snap on gun that's been hanging on the wall the entire time I've been working in the barn. So this was actually really cool to finally be able to use it for something. As a whole, this experience with the paint gun has pretty much sworn me off of rattle can paint. I, I kind of hate it now. I did before, but I really hate it now. This thing feels surprisingly heavily built. Well, I us say for Vever though, I don't know if it is surprising. It's kind of always really high quality. Oh, listen to that. 
Sounds like it's perfectly in tune. I was sitting here figuring out some uh, gas line fittings that I have and seeing if any of them work. And I got a visitor. Hello. Uh, it's a chicon. Are you headed out? I don't know. How about how about go towards the door? Yeah. There you go. No, no, no. Here you go. Yeah. Yeah, you good. There you go. See you later. <laughs> I was going to take the whole compressor along, so when I got my fittings at Lowe's, you know, I'd go to the truck and make sure they fit. But I have this fitting from when I hooked up the oven for powder coating, which already fits. So I am just going to take this fitting and then base the rest of the system around this. I guess the neighbor's chicken's just going to hang out today. You want to go to Lowe's? All right, so here we are mocked up. Compressor head, new motor, the adapter set up here. This is the uh, compression fitting for the copper tubing. Here I'm rewiring this motor. It comes wired for 120 volt and I am rewiring it to run on 240 volt. I'm putting the old hardware and stuff that I want to reuse in the ultrasonic cleaner. Those old grimy bolts are coming back real well. The uh, green speed air paint is coming off of this this T fitting here. Wow, it's even dissolving all the old uh, thread sealant. This shot right here was actually literally my very first time trying to stop a copper pipe. Like, first time ever. Here I'm bending the copper cooling coil that is going to be in the five gallon bucket submerged in water. In order to ensure that it's a consistent size all the way down and that it actually will fit, I'm bending it around this little two gallon bucket and then I'm gonna bend this straight section since I don't know how far away or where it will sit next to the compressor and I can trim that to size later. All right, tank is painted. The decal is underneath there so we can peel it. Here I'm trying to show that one side of the pulley was pretty rough, the other side was nice and smooth, so I'm gonna try to sand it out and get all that like cast material feel off of it so that it doesn't eat a belt while it's running. You might notice here that I put this wooden stick covered in masking tape under the part of the tank where I'm drilling. I'm trying to make sure that when I drill through the pedestal, I don't punch down into the tank. Even though I won't drill through it, it's just a safety precaution. And I covered the stick in tape so I didn't scuff the paint up. I'm going to go ahead and throw this switch in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. This stuff is super, super nasty.
So, I seem to have, with a little bit of rigging and cutting a different spring off camera because it took like two hours, I fixed the switch. The switch did not work before. You plug it in, it would just go. All right, it all comes down to this moment. Is this motor big enough to run this compressor? Is my generator outside big enough to run this whole setup? Let's find out. Then I need to get some more tension on that belt. Either that or somehow the generator doesn't make enough power to actually kick this on. I knew when I went to track your supply last night and got this pulley, I should have also got a belt while it was there. And I didn't, and it bit me, just like I thought. Off to track your supply to buy even more belts that I'm not going to use if I ever actually get a decent power supply. I don't know what the problem is yet. Just want to be done with this. I'm over it. Alright, here's a smaller belt. I've seen a lot of YouTube videos where people put like a uh, little bottle jack in between the motor and everything. I can't really do that because of all my stuff here in the center. Let's uh, kick the belt on. Probably going to be real tight. Yep. Nice and tight. Now let's fire up the generator and see if it does anything. Hopefully with the ratio being so much lower it'll have enough torque to actually turn it over. Come on baby. I need it for my sanity. Sounds normal. I think it's running at speed. The generator's not hopping across the ground. The motor's still cold. It's not making a ton of heat. This thing's actually pushing a lot of air, and it's at like two thirds the speed it should run. It's also not vibrating the compressor across the ground. Alright, on that note, I'm gonna go ahead and eat breakfast. Uh, but my ADHD is was killing me. I had to know if it was gonna run or not. So I'm uh, trying to hang on to what sanity I have left. I've been doing this for like a week because I can only work on one thing at a time in here. The building's a little small. So uh, yeah, I, uh, 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 cool. Woo! I guess. Still pretty sad. So I'm gonna let this thing run for half an hour to an hour while it dumps to atmosphere like that in order to allow it to finish an initial break-in period before I hook up that water cooling loop. So we just crossed the 45 minute mark. This thing has been running.
I was originally going to put brand new 2x4s on this thing, but the carriage bolts in the wood are kind of stripped out and I can't really get them off, so I'm not going to put a ton of effort into something that doesn't really matter. I'm just going to sand them, get the paint off, and stain them as they are. So in order to set the uh, regulator pressure without having the water cooling loop hooked up, uh, I bent this quick little U-turn, plumbed it in with some compression fittings. So the pressure switch doesn't work at all, like at all, at all anymore. It doesn't work even a little. So I had the pressure switch off the whole time. It just, it didn't work at all. Like it just stayed on. Uh, so we're probably gonna buy a new pressure switch because I don't want to die. Ready? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna flip the breakers. I don't know which one does which. Oh, damn, no problem. Well, that escalated quickly. Old air setup. New air setup. I didn't know how much oil this giant generator took, so I bought three quarts of 10W30 full synthetic four-stroke oil. I believe it doesn't have all the detergents in it and stuff that um, engine oils have. I'm not sure. I just bought the right oil. Uh, I bought three quarts. It took one quart, so I have a couple oil changes worth. I think I'm actually going to take care of this generator because it costs so much money. I'm actually really lucky. At the time I built this compressor, they were having a spring Black Friday sale on those Predator 9,000 watt generators. And it made it around the same price as the like 4,500 watt generator. It was a few hundred dollars off from the normal price. So I just decided, you know what, pick it up. Uh, the $100 generator that's been running my lights for like three and a half years that I literally didn't think would let, even last this long. I've changed the oil like once and I feed it waste oil as it burns it. Like not super heavily used motor oil, but lightly used motor oil, you know, thousand mile motor oil. So... I think I'm actually going to take care of this one, though, because it's not $100. It's many, 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 many hundreds of dollars that I didn't have at the time. Put it on credit. I got the Predator 9000 running the lights right now. Uh, the second part of its break-in is doing a light-duty load that, that's kind of variable. So for the next two hours, it's going to run the lights. We have pretty much everything to finish up this air system in the next couple of hours. The new pressure regulator came in. We have the air water filter. And I have enough copper tube left to go ahead and plumb it up over here. So the old pressure switch is a male thread this one is a female and obviously from the tank is a female so um, I'm tired of going to Lowe's I, I, I would have had to but I have these two adapters I don't have a quarter to a quarter but I have a quarter to whatever that is to whatever that is to a quarter so I think my pressure switch might just sit a little higher than usual in the end, having the pressure switch sit a little higher than expected actually worked out really well because it raised the on-off switch up above the pressure gauge so I could get to it very easily. So I was going to delete the regulator from the water separator because it's between the pump and the tank so I can't use it. If I turn that down, I'm restricting the pump. Um, but the fittings I have on hand, this is the adapter I would have to make to get from 3 8 to the half inch compression. So I'm going to go ahead and not do that and use the fittings I bought that are correct and just leave that on there just, just to look cool, I guess. All right, we are ready for a test fire to make sure there's no leaks in the uh, air system. And also, the Predator has not had a chance to try to run the air compressor yet. So, total system test. I'm going to get this thing outside and get it going. This is a feature I've never had access to. That's pretty nice.
I think I just realized you have to have this in all the way, not out all the way. That's probably why it was running so weird. Ah, oh, damn it. Try it again. Oh, look, now it actually builds pressure. It doesn't try to shake itself across the floor. Let's go ahead and fill the water cooling loop. So my IR thermometer is on the fritz, but this line is like almost too hot for me to touch after filling the tank to almost 100 PSI. And then right out here, it's like refrigerator cold, like take a can of soda out of the fridge, cold. There you go. Rough idea of what the temperatures look like on the line in and the line out. So this is something interesting. Um, I didn't think I had too much oil in it or anything, but as the oil gets hot, there used to be a little bubble in the sight glass. Now it's obviously very full and all over the compressor and puking out of the vent for some reason. So I, I guess there's too much oil in it um, and that's that's what happens. I don't know. I ran it for maybe another five minutes and uh, yeah that vent is just not happy. Like I said I guess there's just a little too much oil in it. Now from what I saw they advertise 100% duty cycle so I'm technically not running it too hard but the head 222 degrees cylinders around 200 so it's it's hot but it's not insanely hot keep in mind when i took these temperatures the pump had probably been running for about an hour straight so it's not like it got hot really fast and and it was like a poor quality pump i had been running it for a pretty long time so those temperatures are actually pretty good so this thing is an absolute nope so this thing was an absolutely essential upgrade to the shop. <laughs> it's already dusty. I didn't make it look so good as get dusty. Anyway. So this thing was an absolutely essential upgrade to the shop for the amount of sandblasting and powder coat that we do. I fucked that up. So this thing was an absolutely essential upgrade for the amount of sandblasting and powder coat we do in this shop. And I'm going to be doing painting soon. so dry air was a necessity. The red little PowerMate 20 gallon I was using was on the way out. It used to be kind of okay, but it was getting really slow. It's an oilless compressor, so it was clearly killing itself from me running it for 40 minutes straight. This thing has 100% duty cycle. It keeps up with the sandblaster perfectly. At the end of the day, it was a lot more expensive than I expected it to be, but it was worth every penny of what I put into it. Also, if you guys can hear a little bit of noise in the background, it is currently raining and the barn has a metal roof. So it's not terribly loud because it's insulated, but if you hear it, that's what it is. It is time to talk some numbers. I have my cheat sheet right here with the cost breakdown of everything that's around me right now. Um, to give a, a quick rundown of the biggest parts, uh, the tank I bought a marketplace of 75 bucks. The two cylinder compressor head was $106 shipped on Beaver, Beaver, again, still don't know how to say that. Motor was like $151, $154 shipped. Uh, the water separator was 100 bucks, And the 100 foot line, or 50 foot line, I think it was 100 feet, 50 feet. Can't remember, 100 bucks at Lowe's. Those were the biggest expenses, other than, of course, this behemoth of a generator behind me, which was with tax, oh, and the wheel kit and the battery, $932.77. I didn't expect to have to buy a bigger generator, which if I would have paid attention to this clip, you can see that the Honda 3500 wasn't even running the old setup. I probably should have been able to see that, but somehow missed it. But in editing, it was pretty clear that that compressor wasn't spinning at full speed. 
Um, should have expected to have to buy the generator, but I didn't. So, all right. Now into the nitty gritty that you're actually waiting for the compressor, as you see it, without the water cooling loop. So if you were to build this setup from scratch like I did, um, and didn't run the water cooling loop, you just wanted right into the tank like a normal compressor. This thing all together, including paint, you could take about 30 bucks off for paint if you don't want to paint it, but including the paint, it's $583 even. I'm not sure how I got a dead even total including tax, but I did. 583 bucks. So honestly, all together, something that runs at 12 CFM, 30 gallon. I mean, the best compressor you can get at Harbor Freight right now is like five CFM, 30 gallon, and it's like $700. So that's not bad. All new parts other than the tank. And that includes the belts. Like that's with the belt and the pulley. So everything you see here, tank, motor, <laughs> tank, pump, motor, uh, belt, the right size pulley, and that's the new regulator. The new regulator was about 22 bucks. So 583 under 600 bucks, not bad. Would have been a lot better if I didn't spend almost a thousand dollars on a generator to run it. But there you go, under 600 bucks, and it's a very capable air compressor that can keep up with an industrial size scat blaster or sand blaster. The water cooling loop, <laughs> I expected to spend about $200. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. $396.51. And honestly, most of it was fittings. Well, and the, the water separator, that was 100 bucks. But let's just take the $100 out for the water separator. I think it was like 105. It's um, 290. Take 100 bucks out for the copper, 190. I spent 190 on Fittings. Fittings. Almost $200. I thought the whole loop would cost that. So almost $400. Again, I'm keeping my air at 50 degrees, nice and cold, and very dry all day long. It's worth that price. I couldn't get an industrial air dryer for under $2,000. So $400? Yeah, fine. Um, a generator we already said. And then I put this category in here. This is Ignorance and impatience. That cost me $104.87. What I mean by that is there was a couple fittings that I rushed and I wanted to get it done. I'm like, if I get these fittings, I can finish it today. And then obviously I never did. But if I get this, I can finish it today. If I get this, I can finish it today. Uh, I bought a different size pulley, a different size belt to try to see if I can get the Honda generator to spin this compressor instead of just taking it over to the house and plugging it into 40. That added 30, 40 bucks. So. $104.87 was me not thinking through, being excited, jumping into it, just trying to get it done because I want to see this thing run. So about 105 bucks I cost myself. In total, with the compressor, the loop, the generator, and then me being just, yeah, and trying to get stuff done, uh, we are at $2,017.15. Now, now, let's say you want to do this exact setup, but you already had a good power supply in your garage, you didn't need a generator, and you actually thought stuff through and just took your time and didn't spend money on extra fittings and belts and pulleys that you're never going to use again, this build would cost you, with the water cooling loop, $979.51. So, just for what you see here running, $979.51. So, it's under $1,000 for a very, very industrial grade air compressor. This is a 100% duty cycle. I can run it all day long and not have to worry about it. The only thing I might have to do is change out water for cold water, and I don't have to do that. That's just, I want cold air. It makes the sand blaster run better. So, I don't regret it. I do regret being all, all jumpy and excited, and I wish I would have kind of just taken a breath and, and calmed down a little bit instead of, um, just pushing through and trying to get it done as quick as possible. I took time where it mattered, but I didn't cut any corners. I mean, I even I even took time and did the paint right, which is surprising for me, honestly. I, I, I feel like I'm learning a lesson there. I think it was like a five-day process to paint this, where I waited for the perfect weather, painted it, and then like it was another three or four days till there was another day with the right weather to put the black over the primer. So in that aspect, I'm happy I did that, but there it is. It is well worth it. 
And uh, I think this thing's going to serve me for a long time to come. I know in the past month it's been running, I've already put a lot of hours on it. It's almost due for oil change already. So, If you made it to the end of the video, because I'm sure it's probably a pretty long one by now, I appreciate you sticking around and thank you for watching. Also, credit where credit is due. I got this idea from a channel called Fix206. I ran across a video of his called I Think Build a Better Air Compressor for Dirt Cheap, something like that. And um, that inspired me enough to, I mean, literally like, a couple days after I saw that video, I started working on this, knowing my old compressor was also going out like his. Uh, check his video out. It's not a complete tutorial for how to do it. He doesn't necessarily say all the fittings and stuff that he gets. I don't think I did either. Um, everybody's system's gonna be a little bit different, but he goes through the basis really, really well and lets you know um, what to expect. He even went a little farther than I, than I did with the water cooling loop. He has, uh, I believe, a vacuum release in the bottom. Uh, whenever the regulator purges the coil, it lets the water out and it lets it out at the lowest point in the loop and in the bucket that already has water in it. So any air that, or any water that's collecting down in the loop goes out where the water's already at. So his is actually even better than mine. He did it best the first time. And I believe he said he had it run for a year before he even posted the video to prove, you know, the thing worked. So uh, hats off to him. Go watch that if you haven't already. Maybe you're purging through compressor videos on the internet. Who knows?